Well, good morning, City on a Hill. Glad that you are here with us this morning for another wonderful time in the studio. Pre-game show, pre-game, pre-service warm-up. It's always a, a fun time having you in here, and um, we are, are so excited to uh, talk with you today about a few things coming up. I'm going to get some quick announcements right out of the way, and then uh, we have some fun stuff planned for later in the show. Um, as you know, we're like midway through October now, October 18th, and um, we are uh, very close to uh, what the pagans call, the pagan people call Halloween. Um, we, of course, being not pagan, uh, have redeemed this holiday with what we call Trunk or Treat. And uh, that is happening on October 31st. Um, we would love to still have you come and decorate a trunk uh, set up. You can, you can call Emma for all the details on that. Uh, if that's not your thing, um, which, I mean, come on, man, it's a lot of fun meeting people in the neighborhood. But again, no judgment. If it's not your thing, then you can donate candy still. We do need uh, candy donations as much as possible. You can't really go to the grocery store right now without walking by, like, walls of giant bags of candy. Uh, so just grab one or two of them. They're real cheap and bring them up here. We would be so appreciative of that. would be really, really uh, helpful. Um, next week, we are going to be unveiling a sort of... Um, reimagining of one part of our space here in the worship center. When you first walk in on Sunday mornings, you will notice to your immediate left what looks like a house that just like slammed up against our uh, building. That has been formerly called the Home Point Center. And uh, it served a great purpose for the many years that we uh, partnered with Home Point. We have decided, I think, just because of the vision of the church and the way our ministries uh, are interacting with one another and the kinds of things that we're offering, we wanted to kind of reimagine that space. And so it's still going to feel like a home. Um, we've got some really exciting things that we want to do to try to even push that even further, baked goods and whatnot. But we are actually rebranding the name to the City Life Center. And uh, what you will find in the City Life Center now will be actual resources that we have produced here at the church. So there's going to be a spot in there where you can purchase our City on a Hill shirts, mugs, cups. Uh, we will have some additional things that we'll be putting in there as well, hats. Uh, we've talked about hoodies. There's a lot of, of different ideas that will go in there. Um, there's a section in there for our student and youth uh, and uh, children's ministries. Uh, any of the outreach stuff that we do is going to be in there. And then in the three main uh, sort of columns on the right-hand side, you will find our Freedom Group Ministry, our Life Bible Study Ministry, and our Life Group Ministry. And uh, there will be some uh, displays in there, digital displays of some of the things that we have put out, uh, some video series that you can uh, purchase for very, very, very cheap of the Bible studies that I have done through the New Testament. Uh, an upcoming class will be filmed. It will be available in there as well. There's just going to be a lot of great things in there. And so um, really want you to check that out. We have a special message that morning as well that is another tough issue that's going to play right in line with that City Life Center. And so uh, look forward to that. That is going to be uh, October 25th when that is opened up. So be ready for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we do still need, uh, kind of switching gears, help in the All-Stars Kids Ministry. We're seeing more and more kids every single uh, week. I think we had over 40 last Sunday, uh, which is, I mean, praise God for that. We want as many kids in there as we can get, but we need helpers. And so, again, a call to action. Pray about that. Consider joining. Uh, you can email Emma. You can call us at the office. We'd love to talk with you about what that looks like, what that entails, what you need to know before you commit to it. And then finally, uh, first Sunday in November, November 1st, is uh, the first Sunday back for our City Lights student ministry. Aaron Nelson is so excited uh, to get back in there. Second service, 1030 with the students. Uh, they'll be meeting in the gym. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so if you have kids in that age group and they have not been attending anything youth-related, now is the time, parents, to step up and insist that they go. I know that you want them to have their own say in their world, and that's good, and creating and crafting independence in your child is important, but you're still their parent, and um, they're kids, and they don't always choose the best thing for themselves, and so if they haven't been plugged in, plug them in. 
it will be good for them. I promise you. They'll love Aaron Nelson if they haven't met him. Uh, he's a big ball of energy, and we love him. We love what he's doing in there. It will get great real quick. So November 1st, that's happening. Uh, coming up next, we have heard your cries in the comments section below. Many of you asked for more games. It's funny. We try to bring you these compelling truths and ideas and wonderful things for you to think about deeply. And then we, we play a game one Sunday, and it's like the most watched uh, Good Morning City on a Hill. So we're listening. Look, we're not going to try to force anything. We're going to play another game. Coming up next, Brian Duncan's going to come in, and we've got another game for you. Stick around. Well, here we are. Uh, got Brian in again. Thanks for being here. I'm glad to be here. Uh, we are going to be unveiling yet again another new game. Um, as pastors, as you know, we have to be able to discern the truth. It's, yeah, it's a absolutely. biblical biblical principle, right? Yes. We've got to be discerners of truth. Uh, even if you don't have the so-called gift of discernment, you need to be able to discern truth from a lie. And so today, the game that we are playing is a game that we like to call pastoral discernment. Now, basically what this is, is if you're familiar with the game Two Truths and a Lie, uh, it's it's that. We're just pastors, right. so we're having to discern, hence the name. So how this is how it's going to work. Brian and I each have three cards. On each card, there are three uh, facts, except for one of the facts is a lie. It is false. And so we are to read these three things to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, the person who is not reading, who is listening, has to guess or rather discern uh. which one of these things is in fact not true. At the very end, I believe we have a bonus round. I'm and excited about the bonus round and possibly yeah. a prize. Possibly a prize as well. We don't know what the prize mm -hmm. is, but I'm certain it's going to be good. I have no doubt. At all. If it's a coffee mug from City on a Hill, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. I will be a bit disappointed yeah, as well, I'm not going to lie. But, who knows? I mean, we have no idea That's right. what it's going to be. Uh, who wants to go to... How do we decide who goes first? I didn't, uh, I didn't even think about that. Is this a go, game inside go, of a game? Go rock, paper, scissors? Let's do it. Right, Ready? Go. One. Are we going on, on three? Or on one? three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, so I does that mean I get to choose your? You can choose, first? yeah. Heads or tails, you choose. Uh, I'd like to be last, so I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick off. Okay, kick it off. I like it. This is fun. No, I'm kicking off to you. You go. Oh, I go. Yeah, and I so see. I get the last one. Football terminology. Right. I get exactly. It. Well, no, wait, no, wait. If I read it, oh, you're reading to me last. Right. Ah, okay. All right. Well, let's see here. Do I give the? Um, do I give the topic? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm asking the studio audience. Um, so this topic is celebrities. Celebrities. Not, not my best category, mm -hmm. but I'm going to see what, yep. what I can do with this. All right. Fact number one. While filming the 2000 hit movie Castaway, Tom Hanks received a cut and got staph infection that nearly killed him. Okay. Fact number two. Samuel nice. Jackson has a clause in his film contracts that allows him to play golf during film shoots whenever he wants. Mm, okay. Number three, Justin Bieber was once deported back to Canada for failing to renew his work visa. Okay. So we've got Tom Hanks with a staph infection. We've got Samuel Jackson in golf and Bieber getting deported. So uh, I'm going to go with, I, I think the first two are true. I think Bieber's deportation is false. Mm, that's correct. That is correct. That is correct. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna, wow. I'm put that, that over was, in new That side. was uh, incredible. That is okay. incredible. Uh, this category, are you ready? I'm ready. U.S. presidents. Okay. Very timely. Yes. Very timely. Okay. The first one, first president, George Washington had wooden teeth. Okay. All right. Second one is Richard Nixon ordered a nuclear attack on North Korea while drunk. Okay. Three, JFK was stranded on a desert island during World War II and eventually rescued thanks to a coconut he had carved a distress message into. It's <sighs> rough. I'm going to go with number three. You're going with the JFK. JFK. That's actually true. No way. Can you believe George Washington did not have wooden, wooden teeth? teeth? I would have actually uh, not been surprised by that. One. Yeah, it was so. just interesting. All right, well, dang. All right, so here we go again. Music. Yes. Fact number one. 
Phil Collins, composer of the soundtrack to Disney's 1999 animated film Tarzan, mm -hmm. performed all the songs not only in English, but French, German, Italian, and Spanish as well. Wow. Fact number two, Mozart was so strict that he fired any instrumentalist who played a wrong note on the spot. Okay. Fact number three, during World War II, Steinway and Sons airdropped pianos with large parachutes and complete tuning instructions into the battle for the American troops. What? That seems so outlandish. So the one that seems uh, like obvious, I'm going to go with the Phil Collins. I don't think Phil Collins did that. Did he Did he do this? That is not right. He did it. He did it. Wow. He actually Incredible. did it. So yeah. what was false? So Mozart was not oh, that strict. Oh, man. Not that strict. Dang it. Yes. All right, next. This one's a popular one that you'll love. Okay. It's chickens. <laughs> yeah. So chickens. Yeah, I do love to eat. Right. Eat <laughs> so chicken. right along. Uh, Malaysia has chicken beauty pageants where chickens are judged on their appearance, confidence, and style. Okay. Prizes for winning can be as high as $10,000. Wow. All right. That's okay. Malaysia. Yep. Uh, second, a chicken called Mike lived for two years without a head. <laughs> sorry. I'm going to have to start back over on this one. I'm sorry, Derek. Okay. Okay. Uh, a chicken named Mike lived for two years without a head and became a popular sideshow attraction in 1945. Okay. And third, Elvis Presley had a pet chicken named Dan. Dan traveled with Elvis to all of his shows after 1968. That just seems very oddly specific. Uh, I mean, I feel like without a head, um, <laughs> but then I also feel like that's like maybe one of those weird things a chicken can right. do. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's number one because Malaysia doesn't have dollars. Uh, right. I know. That's what I'm looking at, though. It says $10,000, and so it's true. The Malaysia one's true. The Elvis one's false. Wow. I got to get on the board. I got to get on the board. All right. Fine. Buildings. Okay. This is right up your alley. Yeah, it's right up my alley. I can do construction. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's go for it. Fact number one, there is enough concrete in the Hoover Dam to build a two-lane highway from San Francisco to New York. Okay. Number two, a man in Vermont upset with local officials for denying a building permit for his proposed business paid $4,000 to build a giant illuminated middle finger statue on his property. And I quote, if you don't want to look at the building, look at this, yeah. he said to the Development Re Review Board. And fact number three, the Great Wall of China is over 20,000 miles long. I don't remember the Great Wall of China length. Man! 20,000 miles long. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going with the Great Wall of China is not true. I think the other two are true. That is correct. Whoa! That is correct. Wow. I like to look up what the Great Wall of China. What that link I, I gotta is. have a. I gotta have the bonus round. I gotta win this. Yeah. And get a bonus yeah, round. Yeah. Uh, so here. this one is space travel. Okay. I know you like Star I, Wars. I love it. And so maybe this is this right up my alley. Right. I've got right. this. During his trip to the moon, Apollo 16 astronaut Ken Mattingly lost his wedding ring. According to his fellow astronaut. It just floated off somewhere, and he spent all of his spare time on the mission trying to find it. Wow. Second, astronauts are allowed to take two personal items into space. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin took a picture of his wife in his favorite novel, 2,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Mm -hmm. okay. Third, Neil Armstrong's barber sold Armstrong's hair for $3,000 without his consent. Hmm. This is a lot of pressure. I'm going to go with number three. That's true. Yes. He he actually sold it for $3,000 without his consent. Oh, it's not the, true. The Damn. one that was false, I know, you Is failed. one? Epic failed. No. Number two? Yes. Really? So, yeah, the Buzz Aldrin one, that seemed very specific. So, Dunsky. Okay. So, guys, this is now time for the random bonus round. Okay. This is a three-pointer. So you I'm guys still are, in the game. So you guys are both have an opportunity to uh, tell me which one you think is the false statement. Mm -hmm. So here we go. All right. Statement number one: The first public call made from an iPhone was made by Steve Jobs. He called a Starbucks and ordered four thousand lattes, then just said, "Just kidding," and hung up. Statement two: There is a mountain in British Columbia, Canada, called Tolkien Peak. 
The Near Valley Ooh. Mountains are also named Mount Aragorn, Mount Gandalf, mm. and Mount Shadowfax. Fact number three. With his first earnings from the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones commissioned a statue of himself, which now sits in the large garden of his Highland Park home. Hmm. So who, who gets to choose here? So the leader in the clubhouse gets to pick first. So that would be you, Brian. I believe that Jerry Jones is false. And what about you, sir? You I'm going to go with one? number two. Ah, the Canadian Peaks. The Canadian Peaks. Can I get a drum roll, please? And we have a winner. We have a discerning pastor. It is Pastor Brian. Whoa! Jerry Jones is not that arrogant. So today, wow. Brian, we have for you a Diet Coke. I hate Diet Coke. Oh. And an award for the world's wisest pastor. Whoa! Wow. Framing this sucker. Frame it. <laughs> you, should, you should frame it in James' office. <laughs> but write your name on it. Right. Yeah. I should. That would be great. So I get to put whoever's name here in the date, right? Unbelievable. All right. Unbelievable. Well, that was, uh, you know, I think it was rigged. Good luck name, this but... Sunday, buddy. Uh, Man, I yeah. tell you, I'm going to take all the spoils here. I guess I'm not teaching on discernment anymore. No. <laughs> That was a fun game, Derek. Congratulations that was awesome. to me. Yes, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. And Way I'm to so, go. Way yeah. to go. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we look forward to doing more of those. Again, drop comments in the section below. If you have games that you want to see us play, uh, then throw those down there as well. It doesn't bode well for me um, that I discerned literally nothing uh, in that entire game. Um, Particularly because I am launching a class coming up on October 28th uh, that's really kind of all about discernment um, that I uh, have titled Cults. All right, so that's uh, that's coming up October 28th, 6:45 in the Worship Center. I know that um, this past week, a few of you messaged me regarding the sign up on on the Church Center app. And um, there was a little bit of an error there. It is open now, so if you want to sign up for that group, would love to have you uh, do that. You can pull up your Church Center app. You can call the office as well. We can get you signed up or message me. I'll get you signed up. Whatever you need to do. But October 28th, it's going down. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've been, I've been prepping for it, and uh, we're going to cover a lot of great material that I think will be really informative for you and, and just honestly kind of interesting and straight-up creepy, if we're being honest. Coming up next, we have our weekly time with our worship pastor, Kelsey Barker, our worship and weather report. Stay tuned. Well, good morning, City on a Hill, and welcome to Worship and Weather with Kelsey Barker, me, your worship pastor. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, here is your weather report for this Sunday, the, uh, is it the 18th today? That is correct. Wow. The 18th. This month is just it is moving flying. right along. Flying. So um, today's actually going to be an all right day, City on a Hill. Um, right now, it should be in the mid-70s. I'm going to guess right around maybe 73 degrees mm -hmm, mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. morning. So grab your light jacket on your way out the door this morning. Um, the rest of your day today is going to be um, partly cloudy, but... Um, you know, 86 degree, degrees, so mid-80s. Yeah, not bad. So not bad. Um, maybe you just take off that light jacket later today whenever you're out and about. Um, maybe, after church. After church. Of course. After church, you right. know. Come to church first. Yes. Um, what What would you do on this fine October day? Uh, that's a great question. I would definitely grill. Okay. Um, if uh, my kids are uh, with me and we're doing things as a family, we might... We might go to a park. Uh, we might we might go walking around somewhere. That's awesome. Of course, if I'm by myself, uh, you know I'm playing disc golf. Oh, it's a beautiful day for it. Would you do it? Where would you do that? Probably uh, at City on a Hill's signature park, oh. City Disc Park. Yeah. Wow. Open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That's incredible. Free. Free to play. Completely free. Unbelievable. So if you like throwing uh, premium plastic, yeah, we've got a great place for that here at the church. So what you could do is you could come to church. And, and then, then throw premium plastic. And if you don't plan. own any premium plastic, we sell it as well. Mm. At, at really not premium prices. Did so. you? I heard that you designed some of those discs. I did. Uh, not the discs, but the stamps. Wow. Yeah, the stamps. So fun. 
Not like I know what that means or anything. One time. Anyways, so that's your weather and some ideas for what to do with your day. Um, get more than you bargained for here I mean, on Worship with, and Weather with Kelsey. You don't even have to pay for this. Wow. This is free. That's great. Unbelievable. Um, here's your worship coming up for this Sunday morning. So we've got um, the song Gone, mm -hmm. which is a, a great just declaration of our new identity in Christ. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. And then we're going to jump into This is Amazing Grace. Love it. Just talking about the grace of Jesus and how amazing it is, hence the name. Yes. It's yes. Uh, actually named. And then we're going to jump into the song uh, His Mercy is mm. More, mm -hmm. mm, which is a little bit of a newer tune for it us. It is, yeah. Um, which there's also, we talked about this last week, there's also a backstage session on our YouTube. So just wander on over there and click that if you don't mind. Check it out. Um, later today. In between disc golf holes. Of course. And then we are going to uh, wrap it up with a little bit of an older song. It harkens back to quite an old song called Bre Broken Vessels, mm. um, which has um, Amazing Grace the Hymn in the middle of that. Um, all that's going to be sung this morning, and then we're going to get into another tough issue. We are. We are going to be talking this morning about giving. Mm. Mm. Wow. Uh, it's an important topic. It's one that we kind of, you know, we don't talk about a lot here at City on the Hill. We've, we've never wanted to uh, come across as like salesmen and, you know, pressuring people into giving and all that. But it is a biblical practice. It really and is. it's one that uh, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding on. Um, mm. And so we're, we're going to do a little bit of a, a biblical expose in the beginning. And then we're really going to focus a lot on, on how our, how giving affects City mm. on the Hill. The yep. budget, why we're able to do some of the things we've been able to do, but also our, our budget seems to be under given this year. We, mm. And as James mentioned a couple weeks ago, we're I think about a hundred, little over a hundred thousand dollars under what our budget needs are. And of course mm. with COVID and all that, I mean, we expected that oh, every yeah. church in America is facing that. But, mm -hmm. but then people I think see like, well, we just remodeled the bathrooms and we bought a ranch last year. And you know, there's all these things that are, so how, how is it that we can be, uh, you know, worried about the budget, but also doing these things. And we're going to talk about that this morning. Yeah. There's a very, actually, um, I believe, good uh, explanation for why that is the case. Hmm. And so uh, tune in because yeah. it's going to be very, uh, again, I think encouraging biblically, but also informational for you with regard to how the church is, is operated. Some how, riveting stuff. Uh, how we really. steward ourselves. Mm, steward. So, mm -hmm. yes. Good. Yes. Very good. How's so. the uh, the jet budget looking? The so. jet budget is non-existent. Oh, mm -hmm. surprising. Yeah, yeah it's gone. Yeah, so we, not a thing that altered. We, we don't have a, a jet. No. Oh. Mm -mm. Well, we need a jet on out of here so we can get to the service. Ooh, see what he did there? <sighs> Man, this is why we're professionals. Mm. Unbelievable. Well, uh, thanks for being here. As always. I As always. Yeah. And uh, thank good. you for being here. Mm. Uh, drop some comments down below as well. Let us know again uh, what you think. If you like the games, then say more games. Be praying for his discernment. Be praying for my discernment, apparently. Uh, I'm kind of worried about that. Yeah, it's a very shocking ordeal. Although there was nothing biblical. I think they learned their lesson last week because they know. They know what's up. God bless you guys. Glad that you tuned in. We'll see you next time.